Good afternoon and welcome to this week's BizSmart Lunch and Learn webinar. Sorry, please bear with us. We're just having technical issues at the moment. I hope you can hear us. Um, we'll get started. Good afternoon and welcome to this week's BizSmart Lunch and Learn webinar. Our weekly webinars are aimed to provide advice and share knowledge on key business topics and specialist areas. Joining me today is BizSmart Select Member and Core Advisor, Melanie Hawkett from Source and Effect. Before we start our webinar today, can I ask you to post any questions um, using your question mark function on your screen and Mel will do her best to answer them all at the end of the session. Thank you for joining me today, Mel, and over to you. Thank you, Caroline. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I will be providing some insight into um, negotiation and really helping you understand how you can be ahead of the game with your suppliers. So today, we'll be looking at um, the negotiation cycle. We'll be particularly looking at planning and preparing for a negotiation. And we'll also be looking at some of the techniques and behaviours for success. So what is negotiation? There are lots of different phrases, different sentences that you can read on the internet about what negotiation is. But I've kind of picked two out today. The first one is more around kind of what we do. So it's a process through which parties move from their initially divergent positions, so they're different, different points in time, they're different ideas, what they want to achieve, to a point where agreement may be achieved. I say may be because it's not always achieved. And again, that's why planning and preparation is so important. I also picked out the art of negotiation is knowing how to exchange concessions. This is the how, so it's not the what, this is the how we do it. And when we talk about concessions, we talk about the things that we want to try and get from the negotiation and also what the things that the supplier wants to get from the negotiation and exchanging those between ourselves until we get to the position that we want to be in. So this is the overview of the cycle. There are lots of different cycles and processes that, processes that you'll see out there on the internet. However, this is the one that I've selected for you today because it's fairly simple to understand and takes us through a very clear six-stage process. So first of all, we enter into the preparation and planning, and that is really what the presentation is going to be about today. But it really speaks for itself. Do not go into a negotiation with a blank piece of paper you will not succeed, I can guarantee you. We will go through, go into detail in this more throughout the webinar. Secondly, you move into the opening phase, and this is the vital first impression. You need to be considering your timekeeping, your approach, your physical appearance, your dress, the handshake, the eye contact. A smile goes a long way here. But most importantly, you need to think about what your opening words will be when you move into that negotiation. We then move into a testing phase. And this is where really we start to test the validity of the assumptions that we've made in our planning and preparation. This will help us to see where the movement in the other party is likely to come from. Here we start to understand what is expected from us. And here we will use different questioning techniques to help us understand exactly where the supplier is. So we might look at a, a range of open, closed, probing, probing and hypothetical questions to help us get that understanding that we're looking for early on in the meeting. We then move into a moving phase. 
Um, and it's, it's as it says, really, what you're trying to do is achieve the max, maximum movement you can from the other party and make the minimum movement yourself in relation to your targets that you set yourself. Here we're using techniques such as thank and bank and using progressive language to get that negotiation from one stage to the next. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in the presentation today. So we might be saying things like, so we're agreed on X, we are making progress, let's move on to Y. Or thanks for that, I appreciate that, can we now move on to Z? And that's the sort of language that you're using to progress through the moving stage. We then want to get to conclusion. Okay, there's no fast way of getting to conclusion. What you're trying to do is reach a workable agreement. Um, and what you're trying to do, what you're also trying to do is record what's what's been agreed, agree those next steps, and start to condition the supplier for next time. I'll touch on conditioning a bit more later in the presentation, but actually it can be used at lots of different stages in the negotiation cycle, and this is one of them. One of the most important things that people often forget to do is to review the negotiation afterwards. You need to compare to your objectives in the first place. What is it that you wanted to achieve from this negotiation? Have you actually achieved that? What went well? And what could have been more effective in your actual meeting? And you're thinking about what the hard and the soft successes are throughout the whole process. But today, I wanted to really focus on what I believe is the most important part of the process, and that's the preparation and planning. And this is to place yourself in the best possible position before the negotiation even commences. So we're looking at preparation, which is about researching all of the issues that you might have with that particular supplier, really understanding the background. And then we're looking at the planning, which is all about your strategy, your tactics and your logistics. Now, when I say logistics, I don't mean moving parts from one place to the next. What I mean is thinking about the location of your negotiation, thinking about your travel time to that negotiation or your supplier's travel time to the negotiation, thinking about how you're going to get there. Are you driving? Are you flying? Um, are you going on the train? Whatever it might be. And thinking about what the time of that negotiation will be. I mean, I have been called into negotiations before where it's at eight o'clock on a Monday morning. And in my opinion, that is not the best time. Um, that is not going to allow you to perform in the best possible way. Um, equally, I've, I've flown out to, to China and India, which is a, an extremely long journey and, and gone straight into a supplier meeting and you're not performing um, at the, at, in the best possible way. So it's really important to plan that into um, into your negotiation so you know exactly where you stand from the beginning and you're best prepared. So let's focus on the mo most important part of the stay, uh, stage of the process. Um, it's not rocket science. There are three simple stages that you need to go through. Um, firstly, you need to get your ducks in a row. Secondly, you need to work out what your negotiation objectives are and thirdly, you need to devise your negotiation strategy. So first and foremost, getting your ducks in a row. Here we're looking at the facts, the history, your requirements and your team. Be absolutely clear on your facts. Is this an incumbent supplier? What is the history behind the relationship? How long has this supplier been providing the service or delivering the product? Have the terms and conditions changed with the supplier over time? What historical issues have there been? Is it, it is really important to understand the historical buyer-supplier relationship and, if possible, gain some insight into previous negotiations. These will all help you prepare for your negotiation with this particular supplier. Equally important is understanding your requirements. You should never go into negotiation unless you know exactly what you need, exactly what you're looking for. So what is the specification? What volumes are you looking at? What are the time scales? Consider all of the variables that are important to you as a buyer, but also think about what might be important to the supplier, because that's going to help you exchange your concessions during the negotiation. Equally, the team. Who will be representing the supplier? Make sure that you're going to be sat across the table from, with the right person 
at the right level, the person that's going to make the decisions for the supplier. Because really you want to try and get to a resolution at the end of that meeting. And you're not going to get there if you're not sat with the decision maker. Who will attend from your business? Will it be you? Will it be other members of your team? It's absolutely key to brief your team internally and ensure they know what your objectives are for this negotiation. The last thing you want is to enter into a negotiation and find that internally you're all on a different page. You've all got different ideas about what you want to achieve. So that's pretty critical. A top tip here is to also consider your position. So how attractive are you to the supplier? As customers, we often assume that the supplier wants our business, but the reality is that sometimes they actually don't. The reality is that they look at the terms and conditions, they look at the pricing, they look at the historical relationship with you, and they think, you know what, I don't want this business. So you really need to think about how you're going to position your, your business to them, how you're going to make yourselves attractive to them, because otherwise, otherwise it will be a fruitless negotiation. You could end up walking away without a supplier at all. So secondly, we need to start thinking about what our negoti negotiation objectives are. This is a common approach that I'm showing you today, but it's not the only one. There are lots of others that you can look at, but this one's fairly, fairly easy to understand. And what you need to do is try and set out what your ideal, realistic and fallback position is before you enter the negotiation. So the ideal is, is what you can hope to achieve. So this is the best case. It's your stretch target. It's if you could have anything you wanted from this supplier, Set that out, brainstorm that with your team, understand what that looks like. But realistically, you've probably got an expectation about what you might achieve. And this is usually based on your internal ex expectations and the facts that you've already built around you from, your, from the beginning of the planning stage. Your fallback is really what you must settle for, the absolute minimum. And it's usually based on a weakness within your own business that would affect the relationship with the supplier. For example, you know, if you've not been very good at, at paying them on time, you know, that, that's going to be something that they're going to bring to the table. And you may end up, um, end up exchanging concessions that put you into a fallback position. However, you must not walk away from a negotiation with anything less than your fallback. Otherwise, it's not a successful negotiation. And to set these three out, at the beginning, not to the supplier, incidentally. This isn't to be shared with them. This is something that you must agree internally before you go into the meeting and have it very clear on your mind. So a top tip here really is that you need to consider that there are many negotiation variables other than price. Um, a lot of people go into negotiations and they're extremely hung up on price. It's all about cost, driving costs down, but actually, you can achieve a really strong buyer-supplier relationship by looking at some of the other variables um, that, that, that might impact on the relationship and the business between yourselves, such as quality, um, sole supplier relationships, warranties, exclusivity, discounts, licenses, payment terms. These are all your concessions that you can use to get to the best position for you. So think about those and make sure that you consider them. So thirdly, we move on to devising our negotiation strategy. But before we do that, I just wanted to mention something called supplier conditioning. Now, this is a term that describes the process of setting the scene with your supplier before the negotiation starts. So you've done all your planning and preparation. You know what your team's going to look like. But actually, what you want to do is just set that scene for the supplier before they, before they visit you or before they visit them. You are setting their expectation here. OK, so, for example, you if you're looking for a cost reduction from your supplier, it really wouldn't make sense to turn up in your Porsche. So it's about those messages, soft and hard messages that you give to the supplier before you actually start the negotiation. Prepare them with emails, set the agenda, have those conversations with them beforehand. This shouldn't be confined. The negotiation should not be confined to the meeting room. This, would, this will really help you get the success that you need. So devising your negotiation strategy, you're going to go through sort of three phases, four phases, sorry, when you go, go into your actual negotiation. I've mentioned them before, opening, testing, moving and concluding. 
So when you're preparing for those stages, and this is before you've gone into the negotiation, when you're thinking about the opening phase of your meeting, you think about how will you introduce yourself and your team? Who will lead the negotiation? What will be the agenda and the overall objective? And what behaviours will you lead in with? Will they be warm and firm or will they be passive? We will touch on these behaviours a little bit further into the webinar. Um, secondly, you're going to be thinking about the testing phase of your negotiation. What areas will you focus on? And which assumptions do you want to test first? Prepare your questions to get the answers that you need. It's critical to establish what the supplier wants. Stop thinking about yourself and think about the supplier. Is it the order? Is it the business? Is it to become a more of a strategic partner with you? Or is it that they want a price increase? It's good to know these things before you get in and good to be able to test that straight away in your negotiation. So when you move into your moving phase, you need to be thinking beforehand, how am I going to control my concessions? What am I prepared to give up in the negotiation? Think about what creative proposals you can use. You know, have them up your sleeve ready. So when you're in that phase, you can put suggestions to them and control your concessions better. And then plan your conclusion. So what's going to be my time frame for concluding this negotiation? Think about the sort of strategies you might use to get to that conclusion, because ultimately you want to avoid stalemate. Think about all these things before you go into your negotiation. So a bit of a top tip here, and this is actually really important, and that's to devise your negotiation strategy with your team. You do not want any surprises. I can't tell you how many times I've gone into a negotiation um, whereby there's been maybe an engineer, um, someone from logistics, someone from marketing, all in the same room with the supplier. And the mistake that I have made, and this was early on in my career, I must add, was that I didn't actually sit down with those team members beforehand and understand what was important to them. Because in each part of your business, there will be things that are, that are, that are different, that are more important to one person in your business than, than maybe to you. And you're going into that negotiation. If you don't know what is important, then you're going to end up in a situation where individuals within your business are going to be arguing in front of the supplier and you absolutely cannot have that. So you don't want any surprises. You need to understand what concessions your other team members are prepared to give up. So just a quick recap. This is where we are. So we're at the plan preparation and planning stage of the process. This takes time and is the most important stage of the cycle. Do not underestimate how important that is. Planning every stage of the negotiation. Clearly, we don't need to spend hours and hours and hours on a, on a, on a, on a simple negotiation or a, or a short meeting that you're going to be having. I mean, clearly, this, is, this, is, this whole presentation is geared to if you have quite a strategic negotiation to do. But all of the things that I'm discussing with you now can be used in, in, in varying ways and to varying degrees. So you have your strategy, but this is not enough. The art of negotiation is knowing how to exchange your concessions, how to use behaviour and language to influence and how to get the best out of your negotiation. This is the how, not the what. So ask yourself, if you want to influence and you want to be able to negotiate with your suppliers, have I got the skills? Has my team got these skills? And who might be my strongest and weakest link? These questions are really, really important. Everyone thinks they can negotiate. Now, yes, we all do this on a day-to-day -day basis. We're constantly negotiating. I'm negotiating with my children in the morning to get them to put their clothes on to eat their breakfast. You know, on an everyday basis, we're all, we're all experiencing situations where we need to negotiate. But in a more formal environment, when there is a, a lot at stake, you need to be thinking, actually, do I know what I'm doing here? And can I trust my team to do the right thing in this meeting? And you need to analyse that. So I talked about influence and behaviours before. Um, and in particular, we need to think about this when we open a negotiation. 
In an ideal negotiation situation, a warm and tough approach often delivers the most success. However, different members of your team may have a different approach which could impact on the result and I've just talked about that in great detail. This is often because different people have different drivers and it's really important to understand what those drivers are and this is why it's important to include your team in the negotiation planning phase to ensure that you're all working to the same objectives. So as you'll see on this slide, on the top right hand corner, that's really ideally where you want the lead to be. So strong on relationships, strong on outcomes, confident and assertive. What you'll find is that you'll potentially have people within your team that will be more kind of warm and soft towards the supplier. You know, they just want to work with the same supplier they've worked with for the last 10 years. They're just down the corner. They're mates with the guy in the warehouse. You know, and it's, it's really important that the person that leads it understands where the rest of the team members are coming from and what they're thinking and takes the lead in a strong way in a strong but tough and warm way. So here we're focusing more on kind of negotiating behaviours. I have the right to be heard, but you have the right to be listened to. Aggressive or passive behaviours are the two ends of the scale, and will more often than not end in a negative position for either party, if not both. A productive negotiation requires an assertive approach to ensure that both sides are heard. Each side and each member of the team has the right to be there, has the right to be listened to, has the right to be valued as a person, the right to be respected as a professional, the right to ask for information and the right to take a contribute to others. And we all need to think about that and consider that when we're entering into a negotiation. This goes for both sides of the table, both the supplier and you as the customer. This will bring a positive outcome. So what does assertive behaviour look like? Okay, so firstly, respond, don't react. So language like that's interesting. Let me consider that. Freedom to take the contra view. I am disappointed. I feel, I believe, I understand, but I need, want, must have. This is the art. This is the art of language in a negotiation. Using persuasion and not force. What if? Have you considered? These are probing questions, asking questions, exploring options. And if you took on board what I said earlier on in the presentation, during your preparation and planning, you'll have thought about some of these. What have I got up my sleeve that I can use to help persuade my supplier to do what I want them to do? So we're coming to the end of this webinar now. So what I want you to do is just leave you with some top techniques that you can use during your negotiation and give you a few ideas. Some of them are fairly self-explanatory. Some of them I'll elaborate on a little bit more. So first and foremost, practice. If it's that important to, your, to you as a customer, then you need to be sitting down and just having a little bit of a practice with your team or just on a one-to-one -one basis. The amount of effort that you put into this will depend on how valuable the negotiation is to you as a business, but it doesn't hurt to put some practice in. The use of emotion. Use that early based on what you really, really believe, but be in control of your emotions. Base it on fact and fact alone. Otherwise, you'll end up in a situation where the meeting can become quite aggressive. Move slowly. Control the concessions you make. Give things away that are of value to the supplier, that are of value to the supplier, but are less value to you. The supplier will want to rush you. You can use techniques like taking breaks to get clarification or confirmation of a point. You can take time out of the meeting, go and get yourself a coffee or whatever it might be, but control the speed of the meeting to suit you. Keep the seller selling. Hopefully, by this point, if you did your planning and preparation, you've understood you know, where you sit with the supplier, how important you are to them. That's really, really good to know that before you go into the meeting. 
because they if, if you know they want to they want the business yeah you need to keep pushing at the point of maximum traction don't conclude too quickly and use the two second gap before replying don't rush into your responses you have the time to sit and consider what the supplier is saying to you and if you need to go away and think about it because you feel under pressure just put the meeting on hold and take a break thank and bank anything offered and build on this so if a supplier offers you a concession take it bank it and leave it there to build up okay you don't want to be losing that later on in the meeting because you're not controlling it properly so thank and bank at all times let the other party suggest the compromise it's not for you to rush in and make the compromise let them give you ideas they might actually come up with something you hadn't thought of so let the other party do that be slow to threaten what we don't want is an aggressive meeting there is no point in threats making threats that you cannot keep so be very slow to threaten the use of body language is probably one of the most important and key things during negotiation. And that's made up of 10% words, so that's the language I've been talking about, the language that you can use in a negotiation. It's your tone and your speed, so slowing things down, taking time to respond, and using firmer tones and softer tones when required. And then your body language. OK, so, you know, it, it's not comfortable for anybody when you're sat at opposite ends of the table. You know, we need a relaxed, a relaxed atmosphere, a relaxed environment. And your body language will speak volumes about where you are with things. And finally, don't conclude too quickly. If you are not cringing, then you haven't asked for enough from your supplier. And that's a really key point. Um, make sure that you are absolutely getting the best remember what your ideal realistic and fallback position was and if you can get your ideal then you're you're onto a winner so just to summarize remember the three p's before any negotiation you need to prepare you need to plan and you need to think about your personal impact and when we talk about personal impact we're considering our behaviors our languages and our style within a negotiation environment. Make sure your internal team are aligned. Okay, Sit down and argue all the points internally before you get in front of the supplier. Make sure that everybody's happy with what you're prepared to give up and what you want to take and what you actually want to achieve. Make the most of really simple techniques for success. I've just gone through some of them with you. And they're really, really simple and I can really help you during the during negotiation. Even if in the next negotiation that you do, you take two of those things and implement them, it will make the difference. And probably the most important thing after planning and preparation is to review. Sit down with your team and review the whole process from the planning and preparation phase all the way through the negotiation and beyond the negotiation. And it doesn't hurt here to ask the supplier for their opinion as well. OK, thank you very much for today. Thank you, Mel. Thank you very much. You've got lots of questions coming through. Um, the first one is from Jill, and she asks, um, what are your top tips when you are faced with a panel of decision makers stroke buyers? Top tips when you're face with a panel of buyers stroke as from a supplier side read that to me again please ask Melanie what are her top tips when you are faced with a panel of decision makers stroke buyers okay so you're the supplier you are sat in front of the buyer okay well my advice is to take on board some of the recommendations I've made through the presentation actually you can turn this whole presentation onto its flip side you know, it's the same for you as the supplier to plan and prepare and understand the position that you're in with your customer, if that makes sense. So making sure that you're prepared and you've planned and you've understood the, pre, the, the relationship that you've had with that buyer. Has that buyer always been in that, in that particular role? Are they new? Have they been there for many years? And just understanding as much as you can about um, the, the, the buyer that you're going to be sat in front of before you go to them. All these techniques are actually, if you went 
when I mean I'm actually going to the National Sales Conference this Thursday and they'll be talking a lot about these techniques in that environment because it's the same but just turning it on its head. I hope that's kind of answered it, Jill, but if you do want to give me a ring, I'll explain it a little bit better. Thanks, Mel. Um, another question from um, Lee. Where would be the best place to hold a negotiation? Ah, okay. This is interesting, actually, because it really depends on what you want the outcome to be. People often think that the best place for you to hold a negotiation is to bring the supplier to your offices and sit them in an, sit them in an office and, and, and batter them down on price or whatever it might be. But actually, that's not always the best case. Sometimes it can be better to hold your negotiation in a neutral place um, because you really, really, um, you really think the relationship is actually the most important thing with your supplier, and you want them to feel comfortable, and you want and you want to feel comfortable yourself. So the key thing really is to just decide what you want the outcome to be. You know, if you may be in a position where you've got to travel to the other side of the world. I've gone to negotiations in China, and really, you you know, you've got to go to China. You've got to go to their office. And as I said before, the only thing you can do then is control your environment and control the time that that negotiation happens so you're rested and you've got time to plan and prepare beforehand. So it does depend on the outcome. Okay, thank you. And um, adding to that, should the whole team be involved in the negotiation process? Well, I think as I said during the, nego uh, during the presentation, the key thing to do is to get your team together before you have any negotiation. And that's when you'll find um, whether you've got a maverick in your team. Um, again, it will depend on the importance of the negotiation, what you're negotiation, negotiating about, um, how critical it is to your business as to how many people you're going to have in the room with you. Clearly, you're going to you're going to want to know how many people that the, the supplier is bringing, and it's important to maybe have a chat with your supplier and find out who they're bringing along, so you can you can make the environment equal. So there isn't a definitive answer to that. It's just to make sure that whoever's in the negotiation fits the environment and fits with what the what the supplier is doing as well, so it's fair and equal. Thank you. Um, Simon goes on and he asks, what do you do um, if a member of your team behaves in a way that is detrimental to the negotiation? OK, I think I talked about this before in terms of techniques you can use to slow your negotiation down and control the negotiation environment. And I think this te these techniques are particularly important here. If you if you're in a situation where you've misjudged and you have got someone in your team in your negotiation that's not behaving correctly then just stop the negotiation but clearly you need to do that in a way um, that doesn't um, that doesn't that doesn't make that particular person you know look bad in front of the supplier so whether you whether you take a break you need to take a break or um, you you feign a, a telephone call or whatever it might be but just just stop that negotiation get everyone to have a break maybe go for a cup of tea good cup of coffee and then take that person to one side and have a chat with them and get them to understand um, why they're having a negative impact on the meeting. In an ideal scenario, you will have done enough work beforehand to make sure you don't have a member in a member of your team in that meeting that is going to have that impact on you. But just in case it does, that's what you need to do. Just stop the meeting. Okay, thank you. Um... We've got another question from um, Kevin. Is negotiation a zero-sum game in your view? A zero-sum game? Kevin, I've no idea what you mean. <laughs> That's probably not the answer that you were looking for. Um, I think you're probably going to have to explain that to me offline so I can answer that properly. Okay, we'll get to, um, Kevin to... Uh, he's baffled, baffled me with... Uh, <laughs> I'm probably laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's all the questions that have come through now with Mel. As she said, um, you'll be able to um, contact her direct and ask any more questions that you have. I will send out um, all Mel's contact details and a copy of her presentation to you um, very shortly. But thank you for joining us this afternoon, and we hope you make our um, webinars a regular slot in your calendar. And just lastly, thank you so much, Mel, for hosting today's webinar, and I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Thank you.